We're really excited to welcome you to Scottish Ballet later in the year. I've seen Scottish, uh, the company, and they're beautiful dancers, and they're welcoming people, and I'm just ready to dive in and just become one, you know? We've already started on the Crucible, and we've been working with Helen Pickett. We identified quite quickly that this role of Tichuba mm. allows for a dancer of colour to take a central role in a full-length work. And we've spoken at length at the dearth of opportunities that yeah. there are for that to yeah. happen in, in new works. the challenges works. around, you know, an artistic director who wants to be able to cast in a diverse way. And how do you go about that in the UK at the moment? I mean, the talent is there, but it's burgeoning talent, and it's our jobs as artistic directors to, to look after that and protect it mm. and develop it at the right speed. And that won't be the same for every artist either. There's not one formula that we can follow. That is a job that we have to take special care with. So we're not just ticking a box to fulfill certain roles. We're taking care of the individual artist. And I think as we know, Every sing as you've said, every single artist takes their own time to develop those skills of character empathy. Um, you've been speaking about the confidence of inhabiting a role, building that role. Yeah, that vulnerability mm -hmm. that you're willing to show and go there is another level of discomfort, I think, that you have to get over. Not caring who's looking at you, but completely being that role and playing it beginning to end. I think the exciting part as well is working with Helen. Mm. Um, it's an opportunity. She loves building characters. Mm. Every single character in The Crucible has a sense of jeopardy with the story and she highlights that brilliantly. And I'm excited to see you working with Helen mm. and going deeper into that character. As we've said before, we're creating a strong black female character, mm. not normally in the ballet world, is that done? I would if say ever? never outside of a ballet black repertoire. I would agree, and mm. there's a huge responsibility, mm. I think, in um, laying down that foundation yeah. stone. There's two ballet companies saying, right, we're going to look at a story that requires this but it does throw the challenge down to us in the future for all of us to ensure that we've got fantastic mm. dancers coming up yeah. that can take on a role such as this and hopefully more roles like this. I think um, what's been important for, for us at Ballet Black is that we, I mean, we've obviously come to know you over many years, but as a board member, you're also someone that we really trust to be very genuine about your wish to increase diversity in the right way. It's not just sticking some dancers on stage and going there, well done, we, we've achieved diversity. It's who's making the decisions, who's telling the stories, who's coming to the shows, who's producing it, you know, all the different levels, who's making the costumes, all kinds of levels in the ballet world that need to be made more diverse, but only the right way not through just shoving people into roles they either cannot do or don't really want to do. So we're waiting, you know, with no rush for people like Cheer in our company to retire out of being dancers, but not yet. <laughs> um, and, you know, be the next directors, rehearsal directors, ballet mistresses, masters, choreographers, all of those things. That for me is the true test. And it's something we've spoken very openly about with each other and something I've learned through my interactions with Ballet Black is making sure that um, the diversity does not stop on the stage. It goes beyond the stage into our audiences, into people that engage with ballet as collaborators, that's composers, choreographers, as you've said, rehearsal directors, artistic directors. It's a very, very long way to go. Oh, yeah. Um, and you can't stop them having their actual dance career first. Absolutely. And like preparing for a role like Tichaba, you need time. You couldn't, even if you wanted to become an artistic director, you shouldn't do it tomorrow. No. You should build up to it, you know, in the same way you, you would build up for a role. So it's, a, a, it's allowing the time, it's staying focused on the goal, but also 
giving the artist room to say, well, I thought I wanted to be a ballet teacher, but actually I want to be a choreographer, or I want to actually be a costume designer, or whatever it is, yeah. Can I ask, Chira, we, we obviously have these discussions a lot, um, but obviously you come from the USA. Mm. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the difference in discussions or similarities mm. that you've experienced. Um, well, being here for 11 years, I definitely feel the difference of uh, what I felt 11 years ago being with the Dance Theatre of Harlem, just growing up in America, being a ballet dancer. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have people who looked like me in my ballet class, and also um, at Dance Theatre of Harlem, I had tons of ballerinas to look up to. To have a company full of people of color um, is amazing, and it also gave me the confidence and also the encouragement to keep going. I was never really told no because I had this confidence because I had people around me. And it wasn't until I got to this country where I did feel, as a dark-skinned woman of color, I felt the difference as far as me walking into places and being the only one and really being passionate about classical ballet as well. You know, um, I think when people looked at me they thought I should be more of a contemporary mm -hmm. dancer, just by the, the outlook of things, yeah. but I wanted to take a ballet class, mm -hmm. you know, and once I got in that ballet class, I got looks, but afterwards people were really interested to know where I trained and, you know, then they wanted to speak to me. But growing up in America, I, I had lots of um, mentors and people to look up to, which I found here, it's, it wasn't really available, mm -hmm. you know. So I feel this thing in me to be a role model to the next generations, and it's important representation, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, a story I remember you, you always tell when we were on our post-show talks um, is that when you, I think, five, you were taken to the theater and sat on telephone books so she could see, because she was so small, and you saw a black ballerina yeah. dancing. I want to say Firebird. But it was Firebird. Firebird. It was the Institute of Harlem. And I wasn't thinking about ballet. No. I used to get, I mean, you know, people think of their daughters pink ballerinas. Yeah. I used to get ballerina cakes, all the ballet <laughs> barbies, but that wasn't in my head. Right. And from what I remember to see on stage, this person who looked like me, I thought, oh, that's neat. Yeah. And it wasn't until I found ballet later that it, it just mm. all made sense, you know. I remember the first time you said that in one of our many post show talks that we have done over the years, that it re I felt really validated for, for all the reasons for setting up Ballet Black in 2001, to create role models so that little girls who are five sit in the theatre and either go, wow, that looks like me, or they, the question isn't even there anymore yeah. because mm. it's not unusual. Mm -hmm. So probably the way you were building up to it's not unusual because there, are, there would be eventually such good representation on stages in the UK.